The Orion spacecraft uh, is America's next manned spacecraft. So the vehicle uh, is going to be capable of low Earth orbit operations and also capable of going beyond low Earth orbit. This new spacecraft design takes advantage of being able to do both. It's a very uh, flexible design. Orion serves a need for space station. It, it, it brings crews back and forth. It brings supplies, some supplies back and forth, some critical things with it. But the missions to space stations serve a big purpose for Orion as well. It's, it's you don't want to take the new car out on the long duration road trip the first time out. So from a strictly Orion perspective, we get a lot of benefit from these near Earth, low Earth orbit missions to try out the spacecraft. When we go to a station, virtually all the functions that we need on lunar for Orion will be exercised. You need power generation, you need thermal control, obviously all the avionics you need, rendezvous and docking, which are critical obviously for a lunar mission where you're, you're sending a module to the surface and then having to rejoin with it when it returns. So virtually every system that has to be used for lunar is used during those low Earth orbit missions. In the Constellation program, we're going to the moon to be able to learn how to, to live there, to stay there, to use resources that are present to enable our missions and deal with these problems in a situation where the crew is, is further away from Earth. The Constellation lunar exploration scenarios fall into two different categories. With the Altair lunar lander, we can set a crew of four down anywhere on the surface of the moon and sustain them for seven days, whether it's to deploy a telescope or perform a geologic expedition. There's another configuration, another variant, if you will, of the Altair lunar lander, and that's called a cargo lander. And this Altair cargo version will enable us to deliver large pieces of a lunar outpost infrastructure, like a big habitat or several pressurized rovers or a large power generation capability. All the necessary building blocks of a lunar outpost, and this outpost will sustain a crew of four for, for missions up to 180 days. So the Altair lunar lander will be the mode by which we bring the crew back and forth. Um, it will take the crew there, wait for them for their 180 day stay, and then be capable of bringing them back to the Orion spacecraft in low lunar orbit. Human exploration of Mars is different than any mission we've conducted before. During Apollo, the missions were fairly short, three days there, three days exploring the surface and three days coming back. But with human exploration of Mars, it's much more difficult. It'll take about six months for the crew to get out to Mars. That's about what we do on space station in a crew rotation mission, so we're learning a lot there. Once crews get to Mars, they'll explore the planet for about 500 days, waiting for the proper alignment between Earth and Mars. And when that alignment occurs, it'll take about another six months to come back. So overall, it's about a two and a half year mission. Again, six months out, a year and a half there, and six months coming back. Future human exploration of Mars will be a stepwise progression, starting here on Earth, Earth analogs, learning how, to, how to, to test systems and how things operate. Constellation systems that we're developing today will feed in very nicely to future human exploration of Mars. Launching the Orion capsule fits in perfectly in terms of delivering crew to low Earth orbit, up to six crew. The space station fits in, in terms of being a very vital test bed for human operations in space. Uh, future systems that we're gonna land on the surface of the moon, the habitats, the pressurized rovers, the power systems, all of those elements will be, if not identical, very similar to the systems that will actually take to Mars. 